Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy representing the Solid Foundation International Ministries. Okay, I haven't done a video in a while because I've been on the go. Um, I've been busy, but I'm back. And um, this video is concerning Mormonism, okay, that uh, you may see uh, these Mormons out uh, riding on these bikes pushing this false doctrine, pushing this false philosophy on others, especially the black communities, man. So let me show you the images right quick. Let's get into it. I'm, I'm holding the camera up, as you can see. I don't have a tripod, but we gonna do this thing to the best of our ability. Okay, you may see right here where it says, it says the Book of Mormon, all right? And at the bottom, it says another testament of Jesus Christ. Okay, well, we know his name is not Jesus Christ, all right? That's what the world ignorantly calls him, but we know his name is Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Okay, but the Book of Mormon says that this is another testament of Jesus Christ. All right, so if this is another testament of Jesus Christ, um, we have to prove this um, concerning the Bible, man, that this is false doctrine, man. This book doesn't have nothing to do based on uh, another testament of Jesus Christ. All right, and we're going to get to the scriptures on that, man. This is the Book of Mormon, and this Mormonism is false doctrine, so beware. Okay, so let's get into that concerning another testament of Jesus Christ, because uh, as you can see, as you can see, man, this these, these are Mormons, okay? For those of you that don't know what Mormons may look like. These are Mormons, okay? They call themselves Mormons. Uh, they're supposed to be followers of Jesus Christ. They say they the uh, Mormons, the Latter-day Saints, okay? LDS, Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ. They're supposed to be followers of Him, but they have somehow kind of, uh, they have kind of annexed some false philosophy and twisted all the scriptures up, man, and they just been out deceiving the world, man, with this false doctrine based on based on Mormonism. So, as you notice, we looked at the Book of Mormon concerning it says another testament of Jesus Christ. Well, let's go to Hebrews eight and eight and see if there another testament because it the word testament in the Holy Bible, okay. Um, let me explain the word testament. The word testament in the Holy Bible is not supposed to be there, okay? You have the Old Testament, which you have 39 books in the Old Testament, and then you have the New Testament, which you have 27 books in the New Testament, okay? And um, the word testament are not supposed to be there, okay? It's, uh, it's supposed to be covenant, okay? You have the Old Covenant, which is the Old, uh, old Covenant, which is the 39 books, which they say the Old Testament, and then you have the New Covenant, which is the 27 books, which they say is the New Testament. The scholars took covenant out and they added testament, okay, because they didn't want you to know that the covenant was only given to the children of Israel, okay. He made an old covenant with the children of Israel. Then he made a new covenant only with the children of Israel. So they took covenant out and they replaced it to testament. So you wouldn't know basically that the covenant was directed to the children of Israel and only to the children of Israel. So he can deceive the world and make the world think that the covenants were given to everyone based upon the Old New Testament. But the Bible was only written for the children of Israel. Who are the children of Israel? The Negroes. Hispanics and Native Indians. So let's get back into this Book of Mormon concerning another testament of Jesus Christ. Let's see, according to the scriptures, we going in blue letter. We'll get Hebrews eight and eight starting off. Okay, Hebrews eight and eight concerning about another testament that they claim that this Book of Mormon is, and um. Let's get into it. Hebrews 8 and 7. It says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second covenant. 
So you see right here, it say for if the first covenant have been faultless, then should no place be sought for the second, because the first covenant was the the the, the covenant that the Most High Yahweh by some Yahweh Shai he made with the children of Israel. Okay, he made a covenant with the children of Israel and only with the children of Israel. Okay. In the and uh, uh, the beginning of time, when the nation of Israel formulated, he sent out Moses. He gave Moses laws to give to the children of Israel. Okay, and the covenant is basically an agreement. That's another word for a covenant. So he gave the children of Israel, which are Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, the covenant. Okay, concerning the old, the old, the old testament that some may say, and then it says for if. if for that the first covenant have been faultless, then should no place be sought for the second covenant. So what is the second covenant? The second covenant would be the New Testament. Let's not forget the scholars took out testament and then they replaced it with covenant. I mean they took out covenant and they replaced it with testament. So Hebrews 8 and 8 it says, For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day is come, said Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant. Right here, he said that he will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The house of Israel being the northern kingdom, the house of Judah being the southern kingdom. Both of these kingdoms makes up the whole house of Israel, which are the twelve tribes. So he says that I will make a new covenant, which is basically the scholars took out covenant and they put a uh, new testament. You see? Same, same, like we went over in Hebrews 8 and 7, when it says, For if that the first covenant been faultless, the first covenant was uh, basically the Old Testament. But the scholars took out the uh, Old Covenant and they put Old Testament. And they took out the New Covenant and they put New Testament. Alright? So now let's go back into the Book of Mormon. So according to Hebrews 8 and 7, verse 7 and verses 8, he said, Behold, he will make a new covenant. He said, For the, for if the first covenant have not been faultless, then there will be no need for a new covenant. Okay, so for the Book of Mormon, it says this is another testament of Jesus Christ. So you can just take out testament and just replace that with covenant because that's what it means. So you, you're telling me that the Book of Mormon is another covenant? That Yahweh Shai made. Okay. Yahweh Shai didn't make another covenant. Like the Book of Mormon says. Another testament. Okay. So he didn't make another covenant. Let's go to Hebrews 8 and 9. Not according. To the covenant. That I made with their fathers. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, talking about the children of Israel, because they continue not in my covenant, He's talking about the old covenant. They continue not in that old covenant. They transgressed against that old covenant. He says, and I regarded them not, said Yahweh. Now, let's go to Hebrews 8 and 10. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days said Yahweh, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a power which is Elohim or Allah that's what God means it says and then shall be to me a people see so he he said that in those days he says that I will will make with the house of Israel after those days said Yahweh, I will put my laws into their mind. He said that for this is the covenant. See that right there? For this is the covenant. So he made a new covenant with the children of Israel. So it was the old covenant he established. It was the old covenant, the old covenant he established. And they broke the old covenant. So he sent Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son, to die for the nation of Israel, to die for you Negroes, Hispanics. And native ending is and Yahweh Shai was that new covenant. Okay? He became the uh the high priest when he died on Calvary. He became the sacrificial lamb, and that ushered out the law of sacrifice in the priesthood and the Levitical laws. That exited out 
the law of sacrifice because there's four primary laws, okay? There's your civil law, your ceremonial law, your dietary law, and your sacrificial law. So when Yahweh Shah became the high priest, when he died on Calvary, he ushered out that sacrificial law, and then he ushered in the new covenant. But he never made another covenant, people. He never made another covenant like the Book of Mormon states when it says the Book of Mormon of uh, the of, uh, the Book of Mormon of Jesus Christ, a New Testament, another testament. Let's go back to that. Let's check that out, man. See, it says the Book of Mormon, another testament. He never made another another covenant. It was not three covenants. It was only two. See, this is another testament of Jesus Christ. So these people, man. They're relying on Yahweh Shai, man, because Yahweh Shai never made another another covenant. He only made he only established a new covenant. Okay? When when the Heavenly Father Yahweh had established an old covenant. Yahweh Shai established a new covenant, and after that there was no other covenants. So this book is a damn lie, man. Let's continue to move on, man, about these Mormons. I have some statements I want to make. I have a couple articles I want to read. I'm going to get through this as quick as possible, man. All right? Quick as possible. Okay. So, now I have articles I want to read concerning this Book of Mormon, man. All right? And, and while I'm at it, man, let me get that scripture concerning the Blue Letter Bible, how we shall contend for the faith, man, against these false philosophies, these religions and denominations. All right? And this is Jude. One and three. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the coming salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith and which was once to which was once delivered unto the saints. Okay, so he says that we supposed to be contending for the faith. We supposed to be fighting for what we believe in. We supposed to be fighting for this gospel. We supposed to fight against against anyone that come against this gospel, man. Anyone that tries to denominate, anyone that tries to 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 devastate and uh, to, to 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 criticize this gospel. We supposed to contend for the faith. All right. Anyone who tries to to dominate this gospel, to destroy this gospel with false teaching with vain deceit, we're supposed to contend for the faith, man. All right? So that's Jude 1 and 3. It says, ye should earnestly contend for the faith. This is what we're doing, y'all, through the spirit and power of your heart by Shimmy Shai. Now, let me go on a statement. I want to make a, I want to, I want to show you concerning a statement. This, uh, the book right here, as you can see. It's called the Hebrew Heritage of Black Africa. So, man, this is uh, the Hebrew Heritage of Black Africa. Okay? You might want to get this book. You can order it off Amazon, eBay, whatever. You might want to get this book. It's a good book, man. It's talking about the Hebrew Israelites and their heritage, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, this this would be good food to the soul. So, cop this book, man, while you're at it, before they jack the price up on it. But we want to go to, uh, in this book... We want to go to page uh, 99 concerning Mormonism, all right? Page 99 concerning Mormonism, all right? So this is what it says. It says, uh, be, beware, as you can see, beware of members of the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, and um who are trying on a very large scale to recruit African Americans as members. Many are too young to remember that just a few years ago, all right, it was the policy of the Mormon church that people or African ancestries, people of African ancestries could not be ministers or choir members of their church. Okay? And that was a few years ago. Now they're trying to change change it up. It says they talk that the black race was the curse of Ham and was ordained by God to be hewers of wood and drawers of water. Now the Mormons are in the black communities proselytizing members of our 
race, beware. Beware of the Mormons. And like I said, they taught that that the black race was the curse of Ham. And um, basically they taught that blackness came upon the Canaan as a curse. And you can look at this in 2 Nephi 5 and 21 concerning the Book of Mormon. 2 Nephi 5 and 21. Like I said, it made a statement that 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 the children of Canaan was cursed with blackness, I wanna say. And um say they was cursed with blackness for disobedience or however. But that's that that's false, man, because when you read in Genesis about how the most high cursed he cursed Canaan, which is the son of Ham, he cursed Canaan, but he didn't curse him with blackness, he cursed him by making him a servant. He was a servant to Shem and Japheth. Shem and Japheth are the uncles of Canaan. Okay, because Canaan was the son of Ham. And he cursed Canaan. But he didn't curse him with blackness. He cursed him as a servant. Alright? So, man, the Book of Mormon is, 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 is full of shit, man. It, and, you know, I mean, it's, I hate to say it like that, but it, it excuse my French. It's bullshit, man. It's false doctrine. Alright? So, we're going to continue to keep it moving. Alright? You go to Mormons, that's what they look like riding around in the black communities trying to convert blacks to become as them. Alright? Now, this guy right here goes by the name of Joseph Smith. Alright, Joseph Smith. Okay, let me see, can I get a, uh, a better pitch on this guy? Now, I'm going to tell you a little something about this guy, man. Joseph Smith, supposed to be the founder of this movement, Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith Jr., right? So now let's go into an article concerning the Book of Mormon. It says, this book is not one espoused by Noxtus, but it is one inspired by demons. It's not by the Elohim. It's not by God. Joseph Smith Jr. on September 21st, 1823. At the age of 17 years old, he was praying when an angel named Maranai uh, appeared to him and told him of some golden plates. Joseph Smith right here at the age of 17, supposedly he was praying. And um, it says that, let me get some pictures of this guy. It says that like, if you can see this, it said that an angel appeared to Joseph Smith by the name of Baranai. He appeared to Joseph Smith by the name of Baranai. All right, and he told him about some golden plates that was buried in a hill um, in Pomia, New York, on the side of a hill. Some some plates, as you can see right here, man. He, he, he supposedly told Joseph Smith, the angel Baranai, that some golden plates was buried in the hill, man. And um, let's continue the, uh, the story. We'll, we'll spawn on more of it. It says, he found the plates buried in a stone box. He found the plates buried in a stone box in the side of Cumra Hill near Pomona, New York. Moroni would not let Smith have them for four years. So it says Mar Moroni would not let Smith have them for four years. Now, these morons, I like to call them morons, not Mormons. These morons say the reason why the angel Marana would not let Joseph Smith have the plates for four years because they simply say that Joseph Smith at the time was, was young, okay? And he wasn't able to, to he, basically he wasn't ready for the full manifestation of this gospel. So they said that the angel Moroni would not let Joseph Smith have the plates for four years. But the true story about this is, man, the reason why they say this angel wouldn't let Joseph Smith have these plates for four years, man, because it took a calculation of four years to come up with this false doctrine, man. To come up with this bull right here, man. It took four years and probably four months to come up with this philosophy, this false doctrine. Ass doctrine, man, concerning Mormonism. That's why the angel Madonna wouldn't let Joseph Smith have the plates for four years, all right? Okay, so I have some more stuff, man. Like in the year 1822, right? 
It says before Joseph Smith was uh re before he was even before he received the golden plates in in the year 1822. It says that he would tell fiction stories to his family at night about about Mormon characters, man. All right, and how they live and what they did and etc. Okay, and this was way before Joseph Smith supposedly received the revelation from the angel Madonna, and the angel Madonna told him where some golden plates were buried in the hill. This was way before that. Okay, so in the year 1823, Joseph Smith claimed that an angel came to him. He claimed that uh, an angel came to him. And told him about some golden plates that was buried in the hill, man. All right. So let's get scriptures concerning about this 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 angel. Then Joseph Smith claimed that this angel named Madonna appeared to him and told him about some golden plates. But let's see, was this 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 was an angel from the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Shai, or was this Satan, man? Because he claimed that an angel appeared to him. But let's go to the scriptures. Let's check this up because that angel did not appear to Joseph Smith, man. Okay. That angel did not appear to Joseph Smith and tell him nothing uh, concerning this false ass doctrine, man. Let, let's go to uh, Blue Letter Bible. Let's go back to that concerning this angel Madonna. Angel Madonna didn't appear to no Joseph Smith and tell him that some golden plates were buried in a goddamn hill, man. Second Corinthians is 11 and 14. It said, I'm going to put the curse on it for y'all to see. It says, and no marvel. That means don't be surprised. It says, for Satan himself... It's transformed into an angel of light. So it says Satan. Satan himself is transformed into what? An angel of light. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, man. And that's and 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 that's who we appear to Joseph Smith as. When Joseph Smith claimed that the angel Madonna, when he claimed that the angel Madonna appeared to him, that wasn't the angel, that wasn't the angel of the most high, man, that was Satan. When he claimed that the angel appeared to him. Just like the scripture stated, man. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. In marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So that was not the, the uh, angel of hosts, man. That was Satan, okay? It says at 17 years old, when Joseph Smith was 17 years old, he was praying when the angel Madonna, when the angel appeared named Madonna, he appeared to him and told him about some golden plates, right? And, and, and let, let's see what this is an angel, man. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach another gospel. Basically, if we, talking about the disciples, the Jews, the Israelites, the people of God, the saints. But if we are, are an angel from heaven, preach another gospel unto you. And that which we have preached until you let him be a curse. So basically what he's saying is. That uh, we can't preach if a, if, if, the, if, a, if a saint that's claiming to be uh, a child of God, if an apostle, a disciple, missionary that's claiming to be godly, even if an angel come to you and preach another gospel that, 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 that we have not preached, it says let him be a curse. Alright? So, this is concerning the angel Moroni. Because he came to Joseph Smith and told Joseph Smith... That basically, that it was some golden plates buried in the hill, somewhere located in New York. And uh, that he came to give another testament uh, of Yahweh Shai, who the world called Jesus Christ. So this angel is not, is not legitimate, man. This is, not, this is, this, this is the damn devil, man. Alright? They say just before he was allowed to get the plates, he moved to uh, Harmony, Pennsylvania. Due to the persecution, there he translated the plates. He so-called translated these plates by using the Urim and the Thummim, two magical stones, you see. Said the Book of Mormon in its early editions had many grammatical errors. And many of his passages were obviously taken from the King James Bible. Yeah, man. The Book of Mormon was extrapolated like first, first Nephi, second Nephi. Man, that was extrapolated from Isaiah. Other books in the Book of Mormon was extrapolated from the biblical chapters of the Bible, man. It's plagiarism. In other words, the Book of Mormon was, half of the Book of Mormon was plagiarized from the King James Version. If you don't believe me, do your research, man. Okay? It was plagiarized. This book right here, it was plagiarized from the King James Version, man. It, the book teaches polytheism.
the book teaches that God was once a he God was once a man like we are, and we are to work our way to Godhood and become one of the many gods. So this book teaches I want you people to see this man. This book teaches that God was once man like we are. Another word they call it, they call it exaltation. That God was once a man that worked his way to Godhood. But we're going to prove that false, man. Because that's what they believe. They believe you can work your way into becoming of God. You can, you can work your way to Godhood and to Godship. And you can become of God. You can become, you can come a God. You can become a God. From a man to God in your works. They believe that you can get to a level where you can become a God. We're going to prove that wrong concerning the scriptures, man. All right? We're going to prove that wrong. So let's go back into the blue letter Bible concerning that. Psalms 9 and 2, it says, Before the mountains, let me put the curse on it. It says, Before the mountains was brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So it says, before the mountains was brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth or the world, even from everlasting, your Mosiah is from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. They say that he was a man, he worked his way into becoming of God by, by righteous acts. Alright. When the scriptures in Psalms 90, verse 2 tells you that. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he always existed, man. He was never a man that worked his way from a position from, from humanity into a God here, a God, a position of a uh, divine. That false ass doctrine, man. Okay, let's keep going on, man. It says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So it say that we are all as unclean thing. All our all our righteousness. See, all our righteousness are as filthy rags, man. Even the righteousness that we do, it's, they are filthy rags. Okay? It said the book teaches that God was once a man like we are, and we are to work our way to Godhood and become one of many gods. But Isaiah 64 and verse 6 say our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade away as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So our righteousness are like filthy rags. So there's no way in hell that the, you can work your way from a man into becoming a God, man. And they call that exaltation. There's no way you can work your way from becoming a man to a God. So there go another false ass uh, uh, statement, man, concerning this book. All right, let's keep going on. Um, so it says that they believe that God that exalts someone to Godhood who exalts someone to Godhood and etc. You cannot cross affinity, man. You cannot cross that. All right. So, uh, let's continue to move on, man. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. Since they say that he worked his way, since they say that God was once a man, and he worked his way to Godhead, let's see. Let's see. Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, by grace you are saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift 
of Elohim. It is the gift of the Most High. It's the gift of God. It said, not of works. Not of works. Least any man should boast. So, it's not of works that you say by. It says, for by grace you are saved through faith. Not of works. Let's go back to the article. The book teaches that God was once a man like we are. And we are to work our way to Godhood. It says, we are to work our way to Godhood. And the scriptures and the, and the scripture tells you in Ephesians 2 and 9 that we uh 2 and 8 through 9, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith. Ephesians uh ver 2 verse 9 says, not a words. So there go another false ass doctrine concerning this book, man. Alright? And it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. You know, this book got many false statements, man. I can I can bring out a whole lot of false statements concerning Joseph Smith, man. All right, I can bring out a whole lot of false statements concerning this guy right here, man. This false ass prophet right here, man. Okay, because he said that Yahweh, who the world calls Jesus Christ, he said that he will return in the year 1891, and he didn't. He said. That uh, uh, because Matthew 24 36 tells you that no man know that day or the hour when your house shall will return. Also, Matthew 25 and 13 tells you that the Son of Man come, no man know that day or the hour. But he claimed that 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 Jesus Christ, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he claimed that he will return in 1891. 1891 is gone, y'all. 1891 is passed and he hasn't came back yet. So this is a false ass prophet, man. And then he said basically the the temple of Jerusalem will be built in Missouri within Smith generation, within his generation. Then he also turned around and said that all the nations would be involved in the American Civil War, okay, when they was not. Okay? So let me tell you something, man. If y'all don't know about Joseph Smith, this man had 34 wives, man. 34 wives, man. This same cat right here, put the camera on him again. He had 34 wives. He 11 of which already had husbands. Okay? And then he had seven that were under the age of 18. And two of them were sisters. Yeah, man. We're talking about this guy right here, Joseph Smith, man. So-called founder of this Mormonism movement, man. All right? This Book of Mormon is not a revelation from the Most High, man. It's a revelation from Satan. It's a revelation from the devil, man. All right? A revelation from Satan, a revelation from the devil, okay? That's what it's, that's what it's about. Because, like I say, the angel of on night did not appear to Joseph Smith like you see in this angel. And I mean, excuse me, like you see in this image, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who will probably shall bring in damnable her heresies, even denying Yahweh that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So it says, but there was false prophets right here, man. Joseph Smith is a false prophet, man. Also among the people, even them, there shall be false teachers, okay? False teachers among you who shall probably bring in damnable heresies, all right? Just like, just like these Mormons right here, bringing in these heresies, these false doctrines, according to the scriptures, these false teachers among you who, who probably shall bring in damnable heresies. This is 2 Peter 2 and 1. Now, the Book of Mormon, they teach uh, Jesus Christ is this, this image. But we know in Revelation, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, Christ was a black man. He was not an Edomite. He was not a white man. But Joseph Smith uh, and, and the, the, this movement, the Mormonism, they teach that this is the image of Jesus Christ. We know that this is the image of actual man named Cesare Borgir that was put up in the 14th century to be the new Jesus Christ. So they off right there because this is not Jesus Christ. This is the damn devil, man. All right? And he didn't receive 
um, no, no golden, no golden plates either. All right, cause he claimed that the angel went on. I told him where some golden plates was, how they was buried in the hill, but he didn't receive no damn golden plates, man. Because if that's the case, all right, it, why did why did that why did the angel take Nephi plates back to heaven? Okay, why did the angel take Nephi plates back to heaven? Do they not belong with man? All right, will they not exist? Okay, so why you have to take them back to heaven, man? Because it's because their, their their existence will prove once for all that the Mormonism is true. That this Mormonism movement is true. But why did he take? Nephi played back to heaven, man. Because the Most High Yahweh sent me how shot. He he allowed the Jews to carry the Ten Commandments for several centuries in the original form, written by the finger of Yahweh, man. But why? Why now? Now all of a sudden, the angel Manana gonna take Nephi plates back to heaven? Because this is a goddamn joke, man. If y'all can't see the y'all can't see that this false, this fiction. I don't know what to say, man. Beware of these Mormons. Keep your eyes open, man. Keep your heads up. Keep the faith, man. Because this is real out here. And they ride around in the black communities trying to convert as many people as they can to come over to this, this, this foolishness, man. This is what it says in Colossians 2 and 18. It says, Let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So it says in Colossians 2 and 18, don't let no man beguile you. That means deceive you and trick you and dupe you and dumb you down, man, with this false doctrine, man. Don't let no man beguile you with this false-ass book, man, the Book of Mormon. Another testament on your outside because he never gave another testament. There's only two testaments, which is the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Okay, don't let these morons right here dupe you and dumb you down, man. Alright, that's why I say let no man, let no man, let no man beguile you. Men, alright, morons, Mormons. Don't let no man beguile you of your reward. Don't let no man strip you from this faith, from this Bible that you believe in. In voluntary humility. And worshiping of angels, yes, and worship, worshiping of angels, okay. Joseph Smith claiming that the angel Moroni appeared to him, worshiping of angels, because, like I said, man, if you look on the top of the Mormon church, they have an angel on the top of their church, man, all right. And we gonna get this, man. I'm gonna show you this. So these are these are the the, the Mormon temple, right? Now look at this right here. This is on the top of the Mormon temple. The so-called angel Madonna. Now we just read it says, Let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary humility, humility and worshiping of angels. Look at this, man. Okay, where, where's the image that we just... Look at this. The angel Madonna at the top of the Mormon temple. That's worshiping of angels. Because in Exodus 20, out of the Ten Commandments, it tells you that shall not set up any graven image. You shall not worship any graven image, man. And that's a damn graven image, man. All right? And that's considering the worshiping of angels. This is Colossians 2.18. Say, let no man beguile you with that, man. All right? All praise is due to y'all by y'all side. I want to say shalom.